all of the miles I put in, all of the pain, sweat, and blood that I put in for his glory because he gave me the gift. My friends, that, just what that verse says, it says, run with patience the race that is set before us. I had no clue that the Lord was using something physically that he had given me and helped me and I was loving it that shifted from physical to the spiritual realm for what I'm doing now. It is by his glory that I do it, not my own. The Bible said I was bought with a price. That price was the cross that Jesus Christ died on for me and for you, my friends. So that's why I say the running career. Now, my friends, with all that is happening in the world, we look for that blessed hope of the return of Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 talks about that. In a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you the free gift that the Lord gave me and you, and you don't have to pay for anything. That's free? Oh, my, my friends, this is the biggest free gift you will ever get in your life. You didn't have to pay anything for it. And you'll see what I'm talking about. My friends, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Make no mistake. He came as a boy in a manger. Everybody looks, oh, this was clean. No, it was dirty, filthy, animals, you name it. The Bible talks about magi came and presented gifts to this young baby. They knew that he was the Messiah. This young baby would grow up in Nazareth at age 12. He would go into the temple and teach the Pharisees and Sadducees. His parents had went away back to Nazareth, not realizing that he was still in Jerusalem in the temple preaching. My friends, him teaching in the temple as a 12 year old, if I'm not wrong, the Old Testament speaks about Children being out of line, he actually was supposed to be taken out in the city square and stoned, but it couldn't happen because God the Father had a mission for him to do. Anyways, his parents comes up to Nazareth, up to Jerusalem, looks for him, and I believe the account is in Matthew, if I'm not wrong, my friends. Take a look at it, look it up for yourself. And so they look at him, uh, uh, Jesus says, where have you been? I'm paraphrasing it. We're worried about you. He looks at his parents in front of them and in front of the Pharisees and Sadducees and all these great teachers and says, don't you know I have to be about my father's business? Friends, leading up to what I'm about to tell you, he told his earthly parents who gave birth to him that he was supposed to be stoned because he was out of line. But my friends, he's the son of God. God sent them here to do a mission. Anyways, continuing. He would then grow up and begin his mission, choosing 12 disciples, taught these disciples who became apostles later. He was mocked on, he was spit, uh, walked through crowds that tried to kill him. The uh, devil, Satan, tempted him in the wilderness. He beat that. My friends, as we're going along, look at the pattern. If he doesn't win these things, you and I are not talking. Continuing. So, he defeated the devil in the desert, taught the disciples, healed the lame, the deaf heard, the blind saw. The Bible says that he did so many miracles that if this book could show them, they cannot be contained. In other words, there is a whole lot of miracles he did that we don't know when we get to heaven, you will know. And I hope, my friends, that after I say this, you will be on that boat, that ship, Woo, glory. that rocket going up to the rapture. You see what I'm talking about. Anyways, so he then went to the Garden of Gethsemane. He told his disciples to go over there while he prays because he knew his hour had come. He had come as the Lamb of God. He was to suffer for mankind's sins and to atone for our sins so that, my friends, we don't have to go to hell. My friends, Hell is not meant for human beings. The Bible said it was meant for Satan and his angels. And do not let him lie to you. Satan's a liar from the pit of hell. God, my friend, he is truth. 
John chapter 14, verse 6 says this. I am the way, Jesus is I. I am the truth and I am the life. And no man comes to God the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, except through me. You might say, oh, my friends, that is selfish for Jesus to say that. Oh, my friends, it's not selfish. He paid a price for you. We were bought at a price, a major price. And you're going to see what I'm talking about when I get there. So he told the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane to uh, pray while he goes and prays the Father. They couldn't. They were weak. They just fell asleep. During that time, Jesus was knowing that his time was coming, that he must go to the cross and atone for humanity's sins. The Bible, my friend, says that he sweated and he was in such agony that his sweat was like drops of blood. So finally, he finished. The Bible says that he would get on a donkey, a colt that was never written. That was a prophecy that was in the Old Testament that uh, was fulfilled by Jesus. He, as he's going to Jerusalem. People are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And uh, palm branches are being laid down here and there. And they're just saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, glory in the highest. He went then to Jerusalem, my friends. And that's when things really changed. He got really persecuted. The Bible says he was scourged. Uh, the people basically said, really, uh, take and keep him and release a prisoner. That's all in the New Testament. Then, my friends, he did the unthinkable that we could never do. He made that long crop walk up the Via Dolorosa for the cross to go to Golgotha, the place of the skull. That's what the Bible calls it. It was a heap dung. He was placed in the middle on a cross between two people. My friends, crucifixion at that time was the most violent thing that could be used by the Roman Empire. The Bible says that when he was put on that cross, his bones were out of joint. He was stretched, arm here, arm here, nail here, nail here, nailing his feet. Raised up on that cross, he was getting to the end to atone for our sins. Words were said, and you can go and check out these accounts in the New Testament. He said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He said, woman, behold your son. He was talking about Mary. He said, I thirst. He talked to a criminal. This criminal ended up becoming a follower of Christ. That quick, the Lord said, today you will be with me in paradise. He knew that his time had come and he was getting ready to go to heaven. And so the um, criminal also went with him. Then he said, my friends, as we got to the end, remember his body was beaten and bloody. Crown of thorns was put on his head. There, when they were leading up to the cross, a purple robe was put on him. Hail, king of the Jews. He was mocked. He was the king, not just of the Jews, but of all men. So he got to the end, my friends. And he said those magical three most powerful words in human history. It is finished. And the Bible says he bowed down, bowed his head down, and he gave up his spirit. My friends, that atoned for our sins. But not only that, then, he did the unthinkable, which he had already spoke to his disciples that he was coming back one day. They took and they put him in a tomb, my friends. They put two Roman guards over the tomb, rolled a stone in front so that nobody could steal the body. He would later raise from the dead. When he raised from the dead, my friends, he gave a person uh, something I'm looking forward to uh, talking to her when I get to heaven. Mary Magdalene went to the tomb to look and see if he was still there. The stone had been uh, rolled away. The Bible says that the napkins which was his clothing, were folded up and were put on the stone there in the tomb. There were two angels, one to the left, one to the right of that uh, slab. I recently learned that that represents the Ark of the Covenant, the uh, top, the mercy seat on top. That's a whole other issue. Go into the Old Testament and look at it, my friends. 
Um, and as he was gone, there was nobody there. He had resurrected. Mary looked in and the angel says, why are you looking? This is a paraphrase. He is risen. Just like he said, my friends, he beat death. Jesus would soon appear to Mary. She got the very distinguished honor as a human being to see the Messiah raised. So the moral of that story is this, my friend. He came. He taught. He died. He rose again. And because he rose again, we raise again. Or raise, we'll be raised again. But my friends, you cannot claim the resurrection into eternal goodness. As of right now, if you don't know the Lord, you are under his wrath. You were bought with a price, my friend. So you say, well, Donzel, how can I change my destiny? I'm going to give you an opportunity right now. I'm going to say a prayer of salvation. You will be able to repeat this for me from your heart, from your mind. You're not talking to me. You're talking to God. And I'll tell you this. If you say, well, I don't want to do this right now. My friends, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You could get away from this camera, uh, this program, and you can walk out that door. Your breath goes away from you that quick. For those who, of you do not want to do that, the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Now is the day of salvation. If you still say, I don't want to do it now, my friends, go to Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 13. And the Apostle Paul gives an invitation to Christ. It's a model, if you will, of what Jesus did for you and how you can attain eternal salvation. So if you are ready now, my friends, to accept the most powerful, eternal gift that you will get in your life, I ask that you repeat these words from me in your heart, in your mind. You're not talking to me. You're talking to God. So if you're ready, I ask that you join me. Father God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I come to you now, Lord, in the name of your son the only begotten Son, the Messiah of Israel, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I confess to you that I am a sinner. I have mocked you. I have spit in your face. I have went my own way and did my own thing. Lord, you were calling me and calling me through various situations, and I ignored you. Lord, I'm sorry that I mocked you, spit on you, sinned against you. I confess my sins to you, Lord. I ask that your Holy Spirit would come into my heart and to my mind and change me and make me a new man. I accept your free gift of salvation. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. And I will give you praise and honor and serve you all the days of my life. And Father, it is in the name of your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Hebrew, for Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. Sorry for the inconvenience right there, my friends. Uh, as I said, part two would most likely have to happen because I can't get everything in on the camera. Uh, so I had given the uh, invitation of salvation to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about a Christian. I'm talking about a relationship. Everybody throws this word around. I'm a Christian. This I'm a Christian. No, it's my friends. It's about following Jesus Christ. It is not about us. You are now born again because you accepted his free gift. You say, well, what's born again? Born again, my friends, was a term that Jesus spoke to to a uh, Pharisee. These were the guys that uh, taught the word of God based on the Old Testament. And a man by the name of Nicodemus came to Jesus and asked uh, him, what must a man do to be saved? And Jesus went up, gave him a list. And one of the things he says, you must be born again, born of spirit. My friends, you have now been reborn, born of spirit. My suggestion is that you do this now. 
in Matthew chapter 28, it says this. Jesus gave the disciples instructions at the end of Matthew 28. It's called the Great Commission. He said, go therefore ye into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them everything that I have told you, and I will be with you to the very end of the age. Now, my friends, if you can get baptized, People say, ah, oh, it's a requirement to get into heaven. Uh, no. How do we know? Oh, it's a perfect example. The thief on the cross, which I just spoke to you about. He didn't have time to get baptized. He went into eternity with Jesus because he believed that he was the Messiah. But being baptized, my friend, is an outward expression of what the Lord did for you. Um, <clears throat> and when you get baptized... Uh, what may happen to you is you may say this language uh, that you never said before. What is that? That's speaking in what's called tongues. That's a spirit, a gift of the spirit in 1 Corinthians. Uh, you can go and look for that and you'll be able to uh, find a gift of tongues. And it's uh, when you get baptized, the Holy Spirit comes on you. Some people speak in tongues. For me, it didn't happen. I did speak in tongues before. I, maybe one day I'll give you my testimony. But nonetheless, it's not about me. It's about the Lord. You are now a new creation. This is what I suggest you do. You get your Bible. You read the Bible. Start at the book of John. Read the book of John. And you pray every day. Pray as much as you can, my friends. Humble yourself. Get on your knees before the Lord. He loves you mentally. He says, what I will do, the prideful, I will humble. The humble I'm sorry, the prideful, I will humble. The humble, I will exalt. When you humble yourself before the Lord, that's, that my, my friends, that's powerful. And go on this journey called life with the Lord. You're not going to get it right all the time. You're going to keep doing things wrong. This is why in Colossians, I believe it says, that we are to wash our mind with the word of God. It's a daily process, guys. Do not be defeated. Defeated Defeatism is from the enemy. And Satan hates you. And he does not want you to do what you're going to do. My friends, I, have to, I must warn you. He is going to attack you now because you are a follower of, of Christ. Read the four parables of the soil. To make sure you are the good seed that will produce crop. That'll make sense when you read it. Jesus gave this parable. So that being said, welcome to the family of the Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his son, Jesus Christ. Look forward to seeing you guys next week for another prophecy update. May the Lord be with you, and may Yeshua strengthen you, Jesus Christ, every day. God bless.